So last time we saw that our random walk code is obeying the statistics for a random walk pretty well. Um, we saw that the average of our 100 random walkers is zero and the average distance grows like the square root of the number of steps. There are some other tests that you can perform on a random walk involving um, similar you know, probabilities and statistics and things like that. For example, if you set up two boundaries for the random walk, call one of them uh, below zero, negative A, and call one of them above zero, B, um, then according to the statistics, the average number of steps that should take a random walker to get to either B above or negative A below should be A times B. So we're gonna test that today. Um, the first thing I want to do is add in a visual to help us um, understand what's going on here. And for that, I'm going to recycle the graphs that I had last time. I turned them off for uh, making some visuals. Uh, let's call this one a graph. <clears throat> and let's make that a G curve. So let's, let's make this, let's make both of these red. And let's call this one uh, the uh, lower bound negative A. Cool. And then we'll do the same thing here for, oops, for B graph. So we'll make this one the upper bound, call it B. Now, of course, that means I'm going to have to define A and B for using later. Let's go ahead and define those up here. So let's make A, let's see, let's make it, let's make this asymmetric to start with. Let's make negative A equal to negative 5. So we'll call A 5. Let's make B 10. So this will be our uh, lower bound equals negative A and our upper bound equals B. Now, of course, you want one of them to be positive and one of them to be negative because the, the random walk is starting at zero and they all grow, you know, up or down, um, you know, depending on how the coins get flipped, as we saw last time. Um, let's see, I don't think I'm going to need that anymore. So we've got an A graph and a B graph. Um, and let's add in here a plot statement. Uh, let's see, so it's gonna have to be in, and then let's see, so A is gonna get A every time. So this is gonna be A underscore graph, and then we'll do the same thing for B. Place these two down here. And again, this is just to visualize. We're not actually um, doing any statistics yet. Oops, I forgot to make it a negative A, excuse me. There we go. The reason it's phrased in terms of negative A and B is because you want to be able to multiply A times B to get the probability. Yeah, so for example, here we've had a few exceed negative A and it took a little bit longer for them to exceed positive B up here, which makes sense because we made negative A negative five and we made B 10. So it's gonna take a little bit longer to get past 10 than it is to get past five. Now, according to the statistics, the expectation value or the average number of steps that it takes for the for the random walkers to get from zero to one of these two boundaries is gonna be A times B. So that would be five times 10 to be 50. So we expect at the 50 step mark that um, that most, most if not all of our random walkers have reached one of these two boundaries. Now it's hard to tell from here. So we're gonna to have to keep track of that. So for that, we're going to create a list. We're gonna create a new list called reached um, A or B, and actually let's start that up here where we create the list of walkers because we're going to need one entry here for each walker. And let's say reached A or B, and so we're going to initialize each of those to false, right? Because when they start out, they're all at zero. They have not reached A or B yet. Okay, so, uh, so we've got our list there. Oh, I need to do append, not equals, excuse me, dot append. It's not much of a list if it has just one entry and doesn't even have the brackets around it. And that's not a list and it's just a variable. Um, let's see, so we've got a list to keep track of it. The next thing we need to do is check. So here we're already looping over the walkers. So let's put in a little check over here. This is gonna require an if block. So we wanna check for if First, let's check whether they've reached A or B yet. Um, so first, let's see if they haven't reached underscore A or B, uh, let's see, we're using index I to count these. So in other words, this is only gonna run if we haven't yet reached A or B. 
and we want to check for now whether it has reached A or B on this turn. So let's see. So I want to look for walkers of I to be equal to negative A. I'm going to put a parentheses there because now I need an or for walkers of I to equal B. So in other words, this if statement, this is a little bit complicated. It's only going to trigger true if we haven't reached A or B before and we're now at negative A or B. And so it's at that point we need to change this into true. So now we can say, oh, we have reached it and now we're not going to check for that particular entry again. Cool. Um, now, of course, that doesn't actually tell us the average yet. So what we need to keep track of now is we need to look at the number of steps that that requires. So let's call something uh, steps to A or B. And we're going to call that zero originally because we haven't had anybody reach it yet. And here what we're going to do, we're going to take steps to A or B. And we're going to add to it steps to oops, A or B uh, plus whatever the current number of steps is. So our current step number is N. And then at the end, what I can do after this thing is over, I can print average steps to uh, negative A or B <clears throat> equals. And then I'll take this thing, I'm tired of typing, I'm going to copy and paste, copy, paste, and I'll just divide by the number of walkers. Now, of course, that assumes that all the walkers reach negative A or B, and that might not happen within 100 steps. So what we're going to do is create, uh, is, is change this while condition. Um, let's see, what's the best way to do this? I need to create a new logical variable. Let's call it uh, not all reached A or B. And what we'll do is we'll start out with this thing. So this thing is going to keep track of whether everybody has reached A or B yet. Uh, so originally that's going to be false because nobody's reached it yet. And this thing should only turn to true when all of them have reached um, A or B. So I think the best way to do that is going to be take this thing, initialize it to false before we loop over the walkers. Oh no, actually, excuse me. Let's initialize it to true before we loop over the walkers. And then basically, if we still have not yet reached A or B, uh, yeah, let's check again for if not reached A or B of I. So in other words, if for one of them it's false, then we need to change it to false for everybody. So we're going to change, copy, paste, false. Cool. So as I'm looping over the walkers, I'm checking for a few things. First thing I'm doing is I'm updating all the graphs because I want to keep my graphs up. Um, here I'm checking for whether this one has reached A or B, uh, negative A or B, and has not reached it before. And then here I'm checking for whether this one still hasn't reached A or B, because if there's one walker that hasn't reached negative A or B, then this thing needs to be turned to false, and then we can keep going here. Cool, I think that's going to work. Let's see what we get for our average here. Again, we're expecting this to be negative A, or excuse me, we're expecting this to be A times B, so we're expecting this to be about 50. Okay, it's difficult to tell whether it's doing what I expect. Oh, there we go, it did it. It did it, wow, it stopped when they all reached it. Okay, so the average number of steps from negative A uh, to negative A or B, I was about to stop it and try to put in uh, a print statement to see what was going on, was 55.6. That's pretty close to our expectation value of 50. Um, let's run it again. Let's actually increase the rate this time. Let's make this up to, let's say 50, there we go. So 
So basically what you envision is there's some random walker that just keeps bouncing around in this region along this lattice that's between the two red lines and hasn't passed one of the red lines yet. Oh, that time we got 49.14, cool. Um, let's see, we should be able to get a better average or closer to the average if we increase the number of walkers. Let's do this, let's, let's, let's go for broke here. Let's increase the number of walkers by a factor of 10 and let's up this thing by a factor of 100. And if this takes too long, I will speed up the animation in post. All right, there we go. After our sped up animation there, look how dense this appears now because we had to zoom out so far. Um, this guy almost made it to negative 100 before our last uh, walker made it to negative five or 10. And look at this, it took 50, 0 0.05. That is pretty close to the actual value uh, that we expect. So I invite you to uh, take this code, play around with it, play around with the values of negative A and B, and uh, check that you get uh, the product of the two as your uh, expectation value for the number of steps. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.